hyperspace. That, and we should demand it. The fact that your unit of the police department got a, a um, warrant is a good thing. It shows the people that were working with you were honorable. It shows the DA that you were working under. These were honorable people. They did the right thing. The issue is not so much whether in a given instance law enforcement does the right thing. The issue we're, we're raising is that on the federal level, okay, not that level, not the state level, not the, not the city of New York, we're talking about the federal level, that the laws are different, and that you will not know if somebody is get it, going into your cell phone without a, a warrant. How the heck are you going to know? How are we going to know? So the point is not that it always happens. Of course it doesn't always happen, especially at the local level. But at a, at a higher level, at the level of military intelligence, for example, domestic eavesdropping and so forth, it does happen. We know that because there are people who have whistleblown, who have sort of talked about these things. But again, we get these things in dribs and drabs. We don't know. You know, I just want to mention something else. When, when people speak about lawyers, and they speak about the ACLU, and they smirk, or they make, they make a joke, and I'm not saying anybody in this room has done it yet, but it happens to me all the time outside of this room, okay? Oh, lawyers. Oh, the lawyers, he's being a lawyer, you know? Um, oh, the ACLU, right, uh-huh, roll your eyes. That is marginalizing people. And in every, every aspect of history, when you, when you have a people who people think have too much power, and they want to take that power away, you marginalize them. What happened to Jews in Nazi Germany? What happened to Asian Americans in World War II in California? What happened, and I can go, go right down the list. You can go down the list as well as I can go down. You know where this list goes. It's basically people who are uppity, people who are saying things that we don't want to listen to because there's too much detail, too much complexity, too much power there. So you marginalize them. In this situation, it's the politicians and the culture that's marginalizing lawyers. And the reason is they're marginalizing not just lawyers, they're marginalizing the judicial system. Think about it. Everything you've heard up until now, everything is about taking the judicial system the United States of America and the states and marginalizing it, taking away power from judges, taking away power from lawyers, not letting you bring lawsuits to find out why you're being detained in Guantanamo. Those are ways of denuding the judicial branch of government of power. Why do you do that? Because if you can get rid of the power in the judicial branch, it, it inflates the power of the executive branch and the, Congre and the legislative branch, obviously. That is what this is about. So when you hear these things, I want you to think of it in that in that context, how does what we're talking about minimize, minimize your right to access of the judicial system and for that judicial system to keep an eye on what's going on in the other two branches of government? What I was trying to point out here, and I, and I hate to be so specific on the issue of which agency or which law enforcement agency was, actu was actually responsible for doing the warrantless wiretapping is because when you think about the global war on terrorism, at least when you look at it from the, both the ac get academic as well as the practical standpoint, it doesn't only involve the national level. It also involves your local and involves your municipal level. So when a statement such as the police are listening means that in, we could use, for instance, and again, I stress that I'm a retired NYPD detective, and I know, and for legal reasons, I in no way, shape, or form represent the NYPD policy or procedures um, or represent the department in any way. Um, you don't have to worry about when you're walking down the t uh, in Times Square, is NYPD listening to your phone conversation um, or a local municipality between you and your mother or you and your brother? Um, however, is it done on the national level? Yes, it is. Um, but when you hear that term police, it becomes a whole, that whole right, left, us, them. So, you know, oh, because he's in blue, he's affiliated with them. Well, it's not all that way. So I just wanted to bring that point home to you, that it's just, it's not only, it, it, it's not all. It's some within the organization. But unfortunately, the global war involves all of the organization. A little tough. Okay, I'd like to I have one little footnote, and I really can't resist asking Ms. Barber this question, since you've been an advisor to the Library Association. Part of the Patriot Act was uh, enabled the, or empowered the federal government to get access to people's library records. I mean, when people go into a library and you take out a book, the presumption is that that's private information and nobody else's business. 
Part of the Patriot Act, indeed, uh, empowered the federal government, the FBI, to go into libraries and demand of librarians an individual's history in terms of which books they've borrowed. Now, when John Ashcroft was Attorney General of the United States, he claimed that that provision of the Patriot Act was never used, okay? That doesn't mean from a legal point of view it's justifiable, but he was claiming that it was a basically idle law because the federal government, the FBI, had never gone into any library asking for those records. I can't resist, since I have here a civil libertarian who's an advisor to a library association, what is the history of the use of the federal, of the Patriot Act in terms of uh, inquiring people's library records. What's the history there? Um, John Ashcroft, uh, at the time he said that the, that section of the Patriot Act had never been used against libraries. That was true, and then the next day it was used against libraries. So it was, it was, it was true at the moment he said it, but then um, some libraries were subpoenaed and um, they, they fought it and there was a gag order and it turned into a big mess. But. Um, the, uh, that, that particular portion of the Patriot Act actually has been repealed. I want to just uh, make sure that, that everybody in this room gets why the librarians were having such a conniption fit about the, the Patriot Act. It didn't say libraries in the statute, but it had to do with this thing about the, like the high school kids wanting to do a report on militant Islam. The idea that a child would be afraid to do a report for his social studies class because he'd be afraid to visit websites on the computer at the library completely freaked out the librarians. They were, they were just incredibly upset that, um, that anybody would be afraid to do research, even if it's research on a controversial topic. They're, the commitment to education is so strong that they want people to do the research they need. Um, now, I, I, I do want to say, because I'm, I'm afraid that my side of the table is, is I, I want to say how very grateful I am to law enforcement. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing in this country that I can sit here and uh, denounce certain policies of the government of the United States and know that I can do, that I can be safe. And it's really nice to know uh, that we have a sense of safety. So I, I want to just say that, that I'm grateful, and I, and I really don't mean to be downplaying the, the very, very difficult job uh, that law enforcement has. I do think that the reason the United States is, is, is the great beacon on the hill for the rest of the world is that we have both, that we can be safe and free. And I just want to be committed to preserving the freedom part of that equation. Okay. I want to put Professor Zudo on the spot, if I may, uh, given his extensive um, experience on the federal level. Um, what, is you, what do you think ought to be done with Guantanamo? Should we shut it down? Uh, Barack Obama has claimed that if he were president, he would shut it down. I think Colin Powell, as part of the um, first Bush administration mm -hmm. says that we should shut Guantanamo down. What's your opinion about that? Well, so I would, I, I guess, from a personal per, from a personal perspective, I would I would tend to agree with that. I think there's recourse in the federal system. Um, from a perspective, whether it's a local law enforcement perspective or a federal law enforcement perspective, we operate under guidelines such as, and you've probably heard these phrases for those of you that watch Law and Order and things like that. All right, uh, we operate probable cause, reason, suspicion. All right, and I've, uh, I mean, all the organizations that I've been a part to, all the units that I've been a part of you to, have all operated under that premise. Um, a situation like Guantanamo, um, from an intelligence standpoint, you try to gather as much intelligence as you can. And the notion that there's, that the government is randomly doing things, uh, randomly without any recourse, the, the idea that we're just going to, Oh, just for, you know, just for giggles today, I'm going to listen in on your cell phone conversation and, you know, listen to make funny stories about hemorrhoids to his, to his wife. I have no reason to do that. I do tend to get bored sometimes at work, but not that bored. Um, we operate under the principle and parameters that there are going to be certain triggers. There's going to be certain yellow flags, if you don't prefer that term. There's going to be reason suspicion that would initiate a reason or a particular cause to look at a particular individual for that instance. In Guantanamo, 
You have detainees. Mr. Warren had mentioned in his speech about the number. And